He said, uh, we've been invited to do some work in the Solomon Islands. Um, he said, uh, wonderful opportunity, wonderful opportunity. And uh, he said, I'd like you to be one of the team. And I said, well, that's awfully nice of you, Professor Marshall, and um, very kind of you to think of me. You're booked on the plane on the 8th of December. So <laughs> there was no getting around it. I went to the Solomons. Well, to cut a long story short, I'd been there for three or four days and I was on my way from uh, the island of Guadalcanal to the island of Isabel, where I was to do the first mapping. And we paused for a day. We were travelling in a little boat, a little cockle shell. We paused for a day and a night on a little group of volcanic islands between Guadalcanal and Isabel. And I remember the evening of that day, I went along to the end of the little island we were on and I climbed up a little volcanic edifice. And I sat there, it was a glorious tropical evening. I sat there looking about and all of a sudden, I realised that I was sitting on a modern analogue of what I thought I was working on in the lower Paleozoic rocks between Bathurst and Barriga in New South Wales. There I was on a volcanic island with little coral banks around it. Now by this time I'd woken up to the fact that there were Round these little volcanic islands, there were volcanic hot springs devout, debouching onto the near shore bottom waters. And I'd already thought to myself, do hydrothermal solutions necessarily deposit all their load underground? I wonder if some of these hot springs are really hydrothermal solutions that come to the surface. And this was going on where I was. And I began to think, I wonder if what I'm seeing, these little mineral occurrences uh, in New South Wales, uh, are actually um, little mineral deposits formed around hot springs uh, on the seaward side of little coral banks around volcanic islands. Well, that was an interesting thought. Um, I remember thinking at the time that uh, it was such a th simple thought that it was surprising nobody else had thought it. What I didn't realise was that Elie de Beaumont in 1847 had actually given a lecture on it and uh, the great English geologist um, uh, Della Beach uh, had published on this possibility uh, in his book The Geological Observer in 1851 and there have been a number of people, of course, think about it in the meantime. But um, English-speaking thought in economic geology uh, was so constrained by the subsurface hydrothermal replacement idea that I'd never heard of this. Uh, but I remember thinking it was so simple, it was really silly, and it was surprising nobody had thought of it. But a much more important thought that I had that genuinely nobody else had thought of was I immediately realised that the little island I was sitting on was really just one of a whole festoon that is an island arc. And I immediately began to wonder whether these metallogenetic regions that W.R. Brown was talking about, whether perhaps they were old island arcs that had become parts of continents and the mineral deposits associated with the volcanism was the mineral deposits that we saw as part of these metallogenetic regions. That was in 1950 and I was 24.